when I accidentally came across um, this event, I realized one thing, like as I was preparing, when I was just put on the roster, when I didn't really even think that I would be standing here today, that most of the things that we come together to do as young people are not really by accident. They are things that are being planned by the universe to bring us together to, to create change in the world. I came here like uh, a year and three months ago, never been out of Africa, from a little country called Zimbabwe, where I don't hear people speak as freely as people do here, where I don't get to be in classes where I can say anything about absolutely anyone and I can just I can just hear other people's minds and we can get to debate. I didn't get that. That's why I didn't finish my first degree but I'm still doing my masters. That's why I still believe in human rights and I still believe in people. So when I figured out that you had used outspoken who I have believed in for a very long time, who I talk to often, and who is one of my closest friends, I discovered that it wasn't by accident that I'm standing here. And it reminded me that what, what we have done, like me and outspoken, we met through hip hop and poetry, a spoken word. And it just reminded me that the topics we used to say, we were, we were saying them with such conviction that one day, someday, the world will grow smaller, but then bring them close to our big ideas. And uh, so I think that as I stand here, I'm looking at people with very big ideas to share with that world that is growing smaller. And I can't think of a better place to do it. And I can't think of a better medium to do it except through hip hop. And I, when I think of hip hop, I think it's like I've always told myself it's an abbreviation and people keep telling me, why are you saying this? You should patent it before someone steals it. I don't care. Take it. I don't need it if it's only for me and I patent it. But hip hop to me just means how indigenous plans help ordinary people. A hip hop artist who is practical, a hip hop artist who says something that can uh, change at least even the smallest uh, insignificant change, the most smallest insignificant change. If a hip hop artist can do that, if they don't restrict themselves to speaking less and only talking more about useless gadgets, then hip hop will become one of the social activist tools. So this, this piece that I'm going to do for you, I wrote when I was starting to understand the whole idea of genocide. I, had, I knew that uh, some of the people from the tribe I come from, even when I say tribe, I think it's a way to um, kind of desensitize people to, to the conflicts that actually happen in Africa. It's not about tribes. It's about things bigger than that. But when I wrote this piece, um, I, I thought to particularly look at two uh, places, and that's Rwanda and... Um, Germany, the Holocaust, and I thought to present them in, a, in an artistic way, but also hope that someone who listens to hip hop can stretch themselves to listen and really get to go and read more. So it goes something like, Hotel Rwanda, those who checked in became corners. The waiters were nothing but thugs from street corners. Bread and breakfast that was poisoned without warning. Cleaners found traces of blood in the morning. Shit soaking with the blood of an innocent tribe. Never got to check out, only a few survived. Those alive lived to tell the tale of how the hotel staff crept in at night and ripped all the females. The rooms became jails and beds with sharp nails dug deep into the skin. And at once the lungs failed up to the Day, the hotel manager's own bail. The hotel still recording the highest sales of the rooms of manslaughter to the sons and daughters. The world is full of slow poisons. Watch what you order. You might need rest, but avoid Hotel Rwanda, because you might just wake up six feet under. You might need rest, but avoid Hotel Rwanda, because you might just wake up six feet under. Wake up six feet under. Wake up 
six feet under because you might just never wake up. Once upon a time, there were Jews in an Aryan race, and they both chose to run and compete for first place. The stadium was packed with the blue eye supporters. Also present was the Gestapo, the keep order, the blue eyed and the Jews took the places, the blue-eyed with a smug look upon their faces, saluted the man with the gun like high Hitler, like them on his back was a black swastika. The Jews waited for the gun to go off, of course, but couldn't move. They were chained to the Holocaust, so it's obvious they lost, because even if they shined, they would have found sharpshooters waiting at the finish line. After the race, it was back to the camps and no one asked, only a guard spoke behind a gas mask. So when you run, watch the man with the gun. He could be Hitler from a race that he's already won. So when you run, watch the man with the gun. He could be Hitler from a race that he's already won. That he's already won. That he's already won. Thank you.